He was far, far too quick to pose for anything like a picture or a statue uh, in his electrifying playing career as a winger for West Bromwich Albion, for Real Madrid and Manchester United, among others. But we're here tonight at West Bromwich Albion's Hawthorns ground as part of a fundraising venture to create a statue in honour of the life and times of Laurie Cunningham. Ron, the memories will be flowing tonight, won't they? They will be because, um, you know, a special group of people um, here to celebrate, you know, if you like, the life. Well, I say the life. There's a, there's a couple of boys still around, obviously, Cyril and uh, Brendan. But Laurie, unfortunately, is not with us. And uh, it's a great pity because Laurie... It was, a, it was a phenomenal. People have always asked me, you know, who's the best player you've ever worked with? And I've always said Brian Robson. But for a short while, for one season particularly, Laurie was neck and neck with him. You know, Laurie was a phenomenal player. And unfortunately, uh, he didn't really have the career a player of his quality should have had. When I look at players today that are rated world stars, they couldn't compare with him. In fact, the player that reminded me, funnily enough, most of Laurie in, in the Premiership was Thierry Henry. Thierry Henry always reminded me of Laurie. And, you know, I used to have a saying about Laurie, he could run on snow and not even make an indention. You know, he was, he was terrific. I mean, I had him here, then he went off to Madrid. Um, I actually took him back to Man U and uh, he came back on loan for a short while. Should really have played in the cup final against Brighton but got injured just beforehand. But did eventually go on to win the FA Cup with Wimbledon, yeah, didn't it? Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I was with him. I went back to Madrid to do some, some business of mine. Uh, linked up with him. We went to a game at Real Madrid. Can't think of the played European Cup match it was. Laurie, who had gone there on loan to Rayo Vallecano, who just got promotion. Uh, afterwards, we had a bit of a night out, me, him and his president. And I always remember him saying to me, I'm going to come back here next year and show them what they've missed. And unfortunately, you know, shortly afterwards, um, we got the sad news about his car crash. He's become, and deservedly, an iconic figure, hasn't he? Almost frozen in time, very tragically taken away at 33. But that's the picture you'll always have of him, I suppose. Yeah, the picture I've got of him is uh, dancing down the wing, Great, great technical ability. And he was supposed to be an extrovert, Laurie. You know, I heard all the stories about his, his disco dancing and things like that. But I always found him quite, quite a, a quietish sort of guy. Um, you know, if I, was, if I was, he would all stay and do a little bit of extra training. And very often, he and I, it, we used to have a lot of, if you like, quiet one-to-one -one chats. He wasn't as extravagant as people think he was. Except perhaps when he was in disco. Yeah. There's going to be a statue of him, quite rightly. This yeah. is uh, dinner tonight is in, in aid of that, to fundraise for that. He would never have stood still long enough, would he, to no, have no, a statue? No, 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 <laughs> no. Um, you know, he was a, he was always, that was his game, about movements, pace, um, but great balance, beautiful balance. And, you know, he, he, the ball never embarrassed him. He could manipulate a football. Um, like I say, like some of the best players you've ever thought of. Uh, you are the ref dot com. We follow the way the referees interpret the, the, the laws of the game, and you wonder, with the stringent approach of uh, referees nowadays, what would Laurie have been in today's game? Well, I mean, he played in an era where there's no question the opposition would single him out and go, you know, put, like to use a phrase, put a reducer into him. But he was strong. He had a great physique, Laurie, and he, he withstood, or, you know, he could withstand it. And the funny thing in those days as well, people didn't, there, there was this thing where you didn't, you didn't want to show you were hurt. And uh, I suppose Laurie took a few crunching tackles, um, but I can't remember an occasion when he went down and you thought, come on, get up, son. You know, if he went down, he was injured. Brendan, great to see so many people here tonight to celebrate the life and times of a, a truly great footballer. Yes, he's, um, although he passed away in 89, he's still sadly missed, but we remember him fondly. And for those of us who 
were fortunate enough to play with him, it was a real pleasure because he was an exceptional player. He's kind of frozen in time, isn't he? You know, 33 years old, tragically, when he died. You're like Mar Marilyn Monroe, you'll, ever be you'll be forever 33. You remember him, um, particularly from here, at the height of his powers, really. And you know, people talk about the Man United game and um, the 5 3 game at Old Trafford, but I remember in particular the game that really sold him to Real Madrid, which was um, when we played Valencia in the um, UEFA Cup back in '78. And um, he was fantastic uh, that evening over there. There's a terrific statue of um, Tony Brown outside, and um, we, beat, we drew one all over there. We beat them 2 0 at the Hawthorns, and the statue depicts Tony Brown doing the volley with a cross from Laurie, from Laurie Cunningham. So, yeah. you know, there's a lot of history around that lad, and uh, as I say, it was a real privilege to know him and to play with him. You know, he's a great footballer, but a terrific guy as well. It's fitting that this is to raise money for a statue of Laurie Cunningham, perhaps a statue of him crossing that ball <laughs> for Tony Well, Brown. yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those, I think the, um, the fundraising is one part of it, but I think it's really, um, I think it's the first opportunity that we've had anything like this, or the first time we've had anything like this, to really celebrate um, Laurie's contribution to the game. And also, he means a lot to this region as well. You know, and, uh, this, the, the Albion fans uh, still remember him very, very fondly. What was he like as a bloke? Well, as I say, he was a you know, great footballer, but he was, he was an extrovert on the pitch, but he was quite an introvert off it. Often the um, case. Yeah, well, I think he was just nat naturally shy, but he came alive once the ball was at his feet. And, um, you know, he was, he was a tremendous athlete as well, you know, and people talk about him being an athlete. He was a good dancer. Uh, I think yeah. everybody, everybody acknowledges that, good dresser, just a good guy to be around. To be bracketed with him, as you were, with Ron Atkinson's memorable comment about the three degrees, yourself, Cyril yeah. Regis, uh, and Laurie, how do you feel about that? Well, I think there's a term of endearment, particularly in this region and uh, the fans. I mean, one thing you have to remember is that we happen to be part of a very, very good West Bromwich Albion team. Sorry about that. You know, what's it? Just to <laughs> <laughs> um, the, um, the people talk about Laurie Cyril myself because it was a first, first time the three back players were playing in a top flight, but we happen to be part of a very, very good team. Mm. And I think without that, then it wouldn't have gone down so well. Yeah. But, um, you know, that was a tremendous team. And I only played with Laurie for about 15, 16 months. Yeah. So it's very brief, but it's memorable. Yeah. Uh, you can never really compare a player from one generation no. and bring them forward. But in today's game, where would Laurie Cunningham stand, do you feel? Well, he could play in any team. I mean, I think the. Players of a bygone era, who were great players, would be able to cope with the, the modern game. And that's the same with Laurie. I mean, he, he was a very, very talented young man. Um, things didn't work out as well as you'd have hoped going to Real Madrid. But for um, a couple of seasons, um, they, they adored him over there as well. And they still remember him to this day. He might even have been even more uh, effective and exhilarating because of the way that the laws have, or the interpretation of the laws have changed. Without a doubt. I mean, um, I know we, we football... It's a very simple game football and we've tinkered with the laws, but in my time, I think the best law change I've come across is the outlawing of the tackle from behind. And certainly somebody like Laurie would have benefited more than most. Cyril, what a pleasure it must have been as a striker to play with a winger like Laurie Cunningham. Uh, it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, not just Laurie, but, but Brendan and Brian Robson, Tony Brown. Been a fantastic team in the late 70s and uh, for me, being a young 19, 20 year old from London, it was an absolute pleasure. Is there any particular match, any particular piece of skill in a game that you most remember about Laurie? Well, I think everybody will say the two games, and the one game that he was absolutely brilliant in was against uh, Valencia away in the OFA Cup in 1978 79 right. season. Uh, he had one of those games that if he was a right, if he was a left back or right back, uh, he would have gone home with nightmares. Everything he'd done was perfection. And I think uh, that game, Madrid scouts were there and they said, you know what, we've got to have this lad. He was, at, you know, tremendous. He was mercurial, he was balanced, he was creative. Uh, it was a great performance. And also the 5-3 game. Uh, yeah. The 5-3 game against Man United. Yeah. Laurie was, was brilliant. And I can still hear the commentator's voice saying, you know, the grace and pace and style of Laurie Cunningham. And, um, yeah, he was a true inspiration to the second and third generation of black footballers in this country. Yeah, there were three of you. Ron Atkinson memorably uh, coined the phrase, didn't he, the three degrees? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the typical wrong, you know, uh, sharp-witted and very, very bright. And, and uh, that moniker has stuck. Um, yeah, um, what can you say? You were, you were pathfinders together, really, weren't you? Well, yeah, I think, as I said, it inspired the second and third generation of black footballers to uh, to think, well, if Sir Regis, Laurie Cunningham and Brendan Batson and Viv Anderson can do it, I can do it. And so uh, it changed the whole face of football.
Thank you very much.